So, you've arrived at last. <laughs> yes, it's good to see you all again. Please, come in. They're waiting for you just over there. Ah, I'm glad you all finally made it. The Church has decided this issue now merits the attention of the Congregation for the Sacraments. As such, the Archbishop and all the staff here have been moved to another location. <laughs> Thank you for all your diligence, Rosine. I'd feel much better if you were to stand watch over the front door now. Just in case. Yes, understood. Leave it to me. Let me introduce you. This man is a member of the Gralsritter, a division of the Septian Church. He's the second in command, in fact. Thomas Lysander. He holds the seat of Second Dominion and is sometimes known by his title, the Partitioner. Now allow me to introduce you. This man is one of the Gross Ritter's Twelve Dominion, the successor to the Eighth Dominion, Gaius Warzel. Yeah, a lot happened all at once. After graduating from Thors, I returned to Nord and began observing the struggle between Erebonia and Calvert. However, I began to feel something dark and sinister carried on the winds of the plateaus. I consulted my father and the chief, and eventually my old teacher, Father Barkhorn, came to visit. You might remember the name. He was the traveling priest we chased after during the Civil War. But it turns out, he was also the eighth dominion of the Gralsritter, with the title The Roaring Lion. He was an extremely skilled knight, who investigated the salt pail in North Ambria and trained Brigadier General Bardius. Apparently, he was worried, and came to Nord to check up on me. He explained to me that what I had been sensing was called the Gale of Ruin. I'm not sure why I'm able to sense it. Maybe it's because I'm a descendant of those who fought alongside the Lionheart Emperor. I mentioned this to him and he came to a realization, but then it happened. A Calvardian ship that broke past the 7th Armored Division attacked my village. My father was away at the time. I fought back in an attempt to protect my family, but it was no use. Right as I prepared myself for death, my teacher threw his huge body in the way to protect me. And as he lay there dying, he passed his stigma onto me. Across the nearly 1,000 year history of the Gralsritter, its highest ranking members have each borne one of 12 sacred markings. This was one of those markings. You're the one who called us here in the first place, aren't you? I only hid myself so as not to interrupt your discussion. Indeed. But you may simply call me Rose. I had you all gather here for one reason. To explain to you the background between the Hexen Clan and the Church. It's not as though we don't believe in Adios. There have been some differences in opinion over the years, 
But we in the church have worked together on a number of occasions. For example, during the War of the Lions, or the Vampire Incident in the Middle Ages. Not to mention the fight against the Dark Dragon 800 years ago. But all that was just Rose sticking her nose into other people's business. Legend has it, Emperor Dreykel's camp was once visited by a good witch. And the novel Red Moon Rose features a vampire hunter affiliated with the church who was, in truth, the true ancestor of the vampires. The woman you now see before you was both of these people, even if she looks a bit different. Hmm, 800 or so. However, you should know that my situation is somewhat unique. All other witches are normal humans. Except, of course, for the fact that they are all descendants of those who once guarded the Septarian of Fire. Beginning, this land housed two of the Septarians, the Arc Rouge, Septarian of Fire and Wielder of Fierce Power, the Lost Zem, Septarian of Earth and Bearer of Unyielding Endurance. Each assumed the form of a colossal guardian and went about granting boons and performing miracles for its people. For a few centuries, the land of Erebonia prospered, but eventually, its people began to vie for power and control. The Septarians had always granted their people's wishes, but now their peoples each wished for the other's destruction. And so, the two Colossi began fighting. Their battle ravaged the earth and split the sky, devastating the entire region. The humans tried to stop them, but it was in vain. The Septarian's fight continued 1,000 days, scorching the land black. When the battle ended at long last, it was a tie. Exhausting their power in one final strike, the two Septarians were blown away, left as nothing but empty shells. Yet the tale did not end there. The power expelled by each Septarian collided and became one 
resulting in the creation of an entirely new entity. The Great One, the Septarian of Steel. It was an existence created from the union of fire and earth. It was beyond anything else in this realm. It was the ultimate source of power. Though things seemed fine at first, the survivors of the war soon realized the eternal conflict within it. They knew this conflict would cause it to grow ever more unstable, and that it was not something that could be handled by mankind. With the Holy Beast's assistance, the kins of fire and earth joined together to see the Great One sealed away. However, each of their attempts ended in failure. Left with no other options, they resorted to their final plan. The Great One would remain whole in the higher plane, yet its physical incarnation in this world split into numerous shards. It was this final gambit that saw disaster averted. Indeed. Their combined efforts bore fruit. The Kin of Earth created seven vessels, while the Kin of Fire split the Great One's power and infused each vessel with a part of it. Seven dolls in the form of knights, each bearing the Great One's power, the Divine Knights. Nine hundred years ago, Heimdall was a small city of only about 50,000 people. However, it was one of the burgeoning centers of culture for the region. The Septian Church had finished construction on the Heimdall Cathedral, and there were plans to develop the city even further. But it was then the Dark Dragon appeared, blanketing Heimdall in miasma and transforming it into a city of the dead. Emperor Astorius chose to lead his people south and made St. Arc the new capital of Erebonia. In helping Emperor Astorius deal with this crisis, the Hexen Clan and Gnomes each suffered substantial losses. The Hexen Clan lost its elder, and the Gnomes their holy beast. And so ended their alliance. The final time they spoke would be a century later. It was when Emperor Hector awakened the Vermilion Knight to reclaim Heimdall from the Dark Dragon. He did so at the urging of the Chief of the Gnomes and the new Elder of the Hexen Clan, myself. However, the Emperor fell to the Dark Dragon's miasma and the Vermilion Knight to its curse. The Emperor's son had the Chief of the Gnomes and myself seal the cursed knight deep below the Imperial Palace. That would be the last act our two clans performed together. I do not know why, but the gnomes cut off contact with our clan and hid themselves away. In the 800 years that followed, whenever war struck Erebonia, a divine knight would enter the stage, demonstrate its might, then vanish. I was certain the gnomes were involved, yet all we could do was guide awakeners on the proper course. This unending pattern reached its most fevered peak 250 years ago during the War of the Lions. The false Emperor Orthros unearthed the cursed Vermilion Knight, and a mercenary under Prince Lucius' employ awakened the Palatinate Knight. Prince Dreykels found the Ashen Knight, and Leanne the Argent Knight. The four awakened at once, made for a grand war indeed.
When the sacrifice is made and the ancient blood flows, the path to the Grawl of Erebos shall open. When the tainted holy beast is pierced by the blade of world's end and its blood fills the Grawl, the great twilight shall fall upon the land. Is something the matter? <sighs> oh? You realize something? Right now, we need any straw we can grasp at. Anything at all could help, no matter how small. Yes, you're right. That term... Originator Zero. Could that be OZ, perhaps? <gasps> That's what the Black Workshop called Milliam and Altina. They're model numbers. OZ? Oh, what are you talking about? So you finally made it. That voice. Vita! Ah, so the prodigal granddaughter returns. Misty, d uh, Vita! I heard you had been acting on your own. <laughs> nice to see you again, Grandmother, Emma, Celine, and Class 7, too. And thank you for mediating, Mr. Lysander. Oh, don't even mention it. It always breaks my heart to see a family torn apart, so... Vita! Why? You really don't plan on ever coming back, do you? That's correct. As I said before, my allegiance will forever lie with the Grandmaster. I can't return to you and Grandmother. I can never go back to the way I used to be, just like the Steel Maiden. Ugh. Seriously, who even is this Grandmaster person? I have no clue. But it is clear she is quite taken with them. So do tell, Vita. If you have not decided to return to us, why show yourself now? Has Ouroboros finally decided upon its course of action? Yes. After our experiments with the three Ions, the six other Anguists came to a unanimous decision. They decided to ignore my warning. They will work with the Chancellor and the Gnomes to bring about the Great Twilight, completing the Phantasmal Blaze Plan. <gasps> Th that's So that's how it is. The reason Ouroboros was so quiet the past month wasn't because they left Erebonia. It was to carry out their plan, and determine whether they should work alongside enemies and traitors. How can that be? I if that were the case, it means- They're all our enemies? Is this? It's not the Cathedral's bell. Huh? I think I recognize it from Crossbell. You do? Yeah. I'm sure of it. I remember hearing it right before the incidents in Crossbell, when we were still independent. Oh! The one from the museum! The bell from Stargazer's Tower? But the sound's coming from a different direction than the museum. <laughs> a phantasmal blaze plan. What a fitting name. I wonder how much of this she foresaw. That is quite enough mumbling to yourself! If you know what is going on, show us! It'll be a bit tough without Grianos. I'll need your help, Grandmother. Emma, Celine, you too. Yes! Ugh, I'm not your slave!
Now then, what say we celebrate the continuation of the Phantasmal Blaze plan by ringing in the Great Twilight? I, Enforcer Number Zero, the Fool, shall play the opening note. Check that out! Huh. Sure is something. Well, how about that? So, the beginning of the end, is it? Huh. <laughs> Deja vu. <sighs> the growl of Erebos. Just as the Black Records foretold. The crypt where the great power will be reborn. Huh. <sighs> Reen. Eusis. Couldn't have guessed this is how my day would turn out when I woke up this morning. Let us begin. It is time. Chief of the Gnomes and head of the workshop, show me the way, Black Alberic. As you wish, my lord. Milliam. Was that... Allie? Yes. But why? Boss, Zeno, and Leo. Azure Siegfried. Uh, and that guy in the lab coat. Isn't that... The Blazing Demon and the Fool were there as well. So that's the Maiden. Why? We just spoke this morning and... 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 Lisa. That man's name was Lumen or something like that, right? His hair looked different. <laughs> Franz Lumen, the first disciple of G. Schmidt and the deceased husband of the Reinford Group's chairman, also known as Franz Reinford. Ah, so he has been lurking in the shadows these past 20 years. Yes, perhaps for the sake of working with the Chancellor to engineer this very moment. <gasps> Elisa! Snap out of it! Now's not the time! As a bracer, I can't just sit here and let them pull off whatever that Twilight crap is they're planning. How about all of you? She's right. We can't stop here. We gathered together to do whatever we could to help. Our goal remains unchanged. Yep, true. Elisa, let's go. Yeah. Well, Vita, what will you do now? Well, I'd like to charge in there alongside the rest of you, mostly out of spite. Unfortunately, I suspect things won't be quite that easy. What do you... Something's... There's a turbulent swirl in the mana. Was that? I believe so. Father Thomas! Father Gaius! Cryptids and magic knights have appeared all over the city! Thank you. 